the topic for the day uh, is what is this? P3? P cube. What is cube? P into 3 or 3 times P. So uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, simple logic, you know, that, that's, uh, that's something which we're going to understand. And I'm sure there is a P3 in this, okay? It's not just for the namesake of P3, but there is definitely something with, that you can learn out of it, okay? But before that, uh, let's uh, read the verse. We'll go to uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. I'm not sure if this is visible. Uh, if, you, if you can just go through your Bibles or, or we can read it together if this is visible. Can we all do that? Yep. Then Jesus told the story, a man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. Say disappointed. Finally, he said to his gardener, I have waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down, just taking up space in the garden. Next. The, garden, the gardener answered, Sir, give it one more chance, leave it another year and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizers. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. Say, cut it down. Now, I'm pretty sure you would have learned this parable. Uh, you would have uh, read through it. And this is, this is the story where Jesus is trying to explain uh, how a fig tree, you know, how a tree in a garden is not bearing any fruit for a very long time. So any tree which doesn't give you fruit, you know, if, if, if that's in your garden, probably uh, if you're a farmer, it's, it's not the right place to keep it because it's not giving the ideal result that you're expecting out of this. So it was quite obvious for that man or for that owner of that garden to come down and say, let's cut it down. Why? Because it's been three years and I've been waiting for fruit. And last three years, I've been doing everything right. It's not that the, the tree was ignored. No, it doesn't say anywhere, right? The tree was not ignored. The tree was treated equally like any other tree in the garden, yet it failed to deliver. You know, there was no fruit for last three years. So finally, he you know, comes to this conclusion, let's take it off the garden because it's not going to yield you anything. Instead of that, he's going to probably take out all the fertilizer which is being used for other trees there. And that is probably not going to help for any cause for this gardener. Now, let's, let's put ourselves in that uh, situation. You know, let's, let's take uh, the figs, the fig tree as one of us or like all of us. The gardener is, is the Jesus himself, you know, who, who is there for us. And the owner is the father, okay? The father owns everything. Now, isn't it wrong for father to expect fruit out of us? Isn't it wrong? When I say fruit, uh, it could be a fruit of repentance. Is it, is it wrong for father to do that? He has the every right, right? He has every right to say or to, to you know, command us to bear that fruit. You know, the fruit could range from any things. Let's take repentance as an example. You know, he's asking us to repent on those things uh, that is there in our previous lives. He can very well do that. So father can definitely expect a fruit out of every one of us. But if you're not doing that, of course, it's of no, no cause or no result. You know, it is that time of the year in corporates where we do a mid-year analysis or mid-year appraisal. You know, wherein uh, they would go back and see, okay, from Jan to July or Jan to June, six months, what have you done? 
you know so we have a document which we have to fill it up and you know we have to tell them okay this is what is our achievements and what is our accomplishments like over six months and we cannot just bluff there you know it has to be uh, in accordance with the data you know when i say i have done so much of work where is the data and we get into a discussion with our managers or superiors to actually validate it now if for example i present the data which is totally wrong you know i haven't really worked that much but then i'm just bluffing saying that you know this is what it is what is the expectation of that manager of course i have to result in some uh, you know some kind of work work which was assigned to me to be completed i mean that's the minimal expectation from a manager to a subordinate assume that what if i haven't done anything what what could be the by the way i did everything in last 6 months okay i have achieved my kra what if what if i have done if i haven't done anything in last 6 months what what could be the result they'll fire me why would they keep an employee who is unproductive because that is just adding up to their cost you know every employee uh, has allo been allocated a certain budget no budget is nothing but a salary and that comes out of a business so if i've been unproductive for last 6 month it's a burden on the company right it's a burden on the company and company would probably look for another option probably they might look to hire someone probably within the team who can take over my job or someone from outside who can take over my job because i'm not doing the things in the right way and that's very uh normal or i would say it is it is something which is expected so there is no wrong for father to expect us to bear fruit he has got every other right to come down to you and say son daughter you've been doing things good you know you've been you've been uh, doing all your checks checklist you know tick 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 every time perfect but where is the fruit okay where is the end result that i am looking for okay so if that's not there a father has full right to say let's times up you missed the bus we're going all right let's take another uh, let's go to the next slide it's out of uh, luke chapter 3 verse 8 it says prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to god don't just say to each other we are safe for we are descendants of abraham that means nothing that means nothing for i tell you god can create children of abraham from the very stones you know we have this uh i would say habit or tendency to uh take a tag along with us you know i represent this and you know everything with me is good everything with uh, uh with my past is good you know for example um let's say uh my my dad okay my just just an example my dad is a very well known person in a certain particular area okay uh and i use that a tag of my dad being known as a very well known person for my own benefit you know wherever i go i will say okay i'm son of this person and that person would, which to which i'm actually having a conversation would understand okay he's his son so let's get this things done you know we always go with that mindset okay i'm a christian so uh, i'm a born again so i don't have to do anything i have everything done um, for me you know all my sundays are done all my all my uh, house churches are done all my friday night pray prayers are done but what is that you are actually supposed to do you know that column is still pending that column is still waiting to be filled and if that is not filled no matter whatever you did in the entire uh, you know last phase of your uh born again phase is not going to yield or it's not going to give you the right result you know father is still not happy but glad but you know we have a benefit we have someone who is actually interceding for us who's that 
we learned holy spirit do intercede for us but in this context who is the person who is interceding for us who is the person who is actually pleading for us it's jesus you know we have that access that's what i'm saying we have that privilege wherein jesus is you know talking on behalf of you if you if you look back in old testament if you if you get into such kind of uh, a, a law problem probably that's the end you are gone you know next day you are dead but today when we live in this new testament you have that access you have that privilege of jesus interceding for you you know not just interceding but to guide you at every point of time but we still don't take it very seriously you know you try are you are you trying to understand what i'm saying we still not take it very seriously we we still all do all those things which we are not supposed to do we still get into those pathways which you are not supposed to get through amen okay now let's get into uh, the next next slide wherein jesus is actually demonstrating how he can cut down that tree if it's not yielding any fruit this is out of uh, uh, mark chapter 11 verse 13 uh he noticed the fig tree is full leaf a little way off so he went over to see if he could find any figs but there were no leaves but it was too early in the season for the fruit now as as i mentioned at the start if we are a tree just producing leaves it's of no use of course we might contribute to an extent of uh, reducing the percentage of uh, carbon dioxide and maintaining the oxygen to an extent but what if someone is expecting a fruit and you are doing something else which is not expected out of you you know uh, this is an example where jesus is looking for fruit you know uh, if you if you actually look uh, the example of fig tree you know across bible there are many illustrations which talks about fig tree now fig tree is in and around israel everywhere you go you will find a fig tree and it's one of those trees which can produce a fruit like 10 months of the year you know it's only 2 months wherein there is no real production of the fruit probably that's the dormant period for the fig tree but rest of the year you can find that fig tree you know put in yourself in that in that position there are times when you slip don't you there are times when you go down don't you you know there are times when you get distracted don't you but what is that what is the rest of the year or what is the rest of the time that you are doing are you yielding that fruit are you producing that fruit you know as i said fruit could be as an example of repentance that god is looking from you amen so we'll go with the first p so the 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 concept or the 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 name of the uh, or rather i would say the 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 session what we are doing is more like uh, i said it's mathematics at the start it's p cube so we'll see the first p out of that p cube let's go for it okay i don't know why it's small okay the first p is privilege do you think we all have that privilege which is probably not with uh, other persons out there on the road do you believe that do you believe that uh, you have that special access you know wherein you can go and connect to your father directly do you have that i have that do you have that amen now you know privilege is something which is given to few people you know i remember when i was in 10th standard my marks was uh, marks was not great you know my my percentage was not great and i had to find a college and my dad said okay there is this college which is a special malayali management college i have a membership there you'll get through that college pretty easy and i was considered as a minority in that college so they had a minority quota okay so that means all malayalis can get through even if you are below you know whatever person i'm not discussing the percentage here so i had that privilege of getting through that college just because my dad had this uh, you know membership of some malayali association and i had that special benefit of getting that through if you look at in romans 1:5 it says through christ god has given us the privilege 
or the grace and the authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. You know, it clearly says God has given you that privilege. Say privilege. And it's unique. The privilege that you have, it's not a minority quota wala privilege. It's, it's a portion that God has given to you. You know, it could be different from Sefe to uh, Bijoy to Joel to everyone has a different kind of a privilege and access that God has given to them. So it's not like you have to rush for the, admi uh, uh, the admissions. No, there's a different allotment which is already being done. In Romans 5, 2, it says again, because of our faith, Christ brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. Undeserved. You know, I didn't even deserve to go to that college, to be honest. But still, I got that privilege, I got that access because something was there. Exactly the same way when that veil was torn and Jesus was crucified, it gave us that privilege. It gave us that access that we can come together and sit and worship and receive from God. You know, I was reading through this, uh, we have discussed this a lot of times in our church, how uh, people across the world doesn't have this privilege. I was going through this, I don't know which place it did, but Christians there, they really don't have an access to Bible at all. And they have to smuggle Bible, not in books, but in papers. You know, so every month they would get a courier or via some other mail, certain pages. I'm not, so, I'm, I'm not even talking about a chapter, but let's say Genesis chapter 1, first and second page. And they had to pay for it. Herein we have this word which we carry in now day in, day out, but we still don't realize it. You know, imagine those people are so hungry for word that they survive on two pages of Bible for a month. And they have to wait for the next month to get the another two pages. You know, if they have to add up all the pages of the Bible, probably it might take more than their lifetime. But we still have that access. We have the Bibles. We have every other content that we want available everywhere. You know, I was reading about this country, North Korea. Technically, they don't have anything. They don't have even internet there. You know, no, no, no way of connection, no way of even, even, even to see uh, what is happening around the world. But we have that. We have that access. We have that, that way of connecting to God, way of this fellowship, which not many of us have. Ephesians chapter 3, 7 says, By God's grace and mighty power, I have been given the privilege of serving Him by spreading this good news. Amen? So I have the privilege, you know, not just to say, okay, I have it, but I have to also do something for that. That is what? Spreading the good news. Spreading the good news it can be put down into your, uh, into your uh, you know, the ideology of evangelism or the way you converse with one another, how you share Jesus, how you, how you, you know, share the Jesus that you carry, that you have or that you have known. That access is there with us. Countries, they cannot even talk about Christianity. Countries, they cannot even discuss things out of Bible. You know, they would be probably jailed for it. You know, they will be put behind bars and find heavy just for doing this. First Peter 4, 7 says, But it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by His name. This is the biggest thing that what we have in, in this New Testament. We are called by His name. We are you know, looked up as for, as for Jesus. You know, when, when, when people talk about Christianity, the first thing, obviously, the thing that comes into their mind is what? Jesus? So when someone is 
actually calling us Christian, they're looking from Jesus' point of view. And yes, we know we, we have discussed this. We are made in his own image. So that access, that privilege is only with us. Say privilege is only with us. Privilege is only with us. Amen. So, it's important to have privilege. It's, it's necessity for us in this, in this world. But it, we should also look, what are we doing with this privilege? There has to be a purpose connected to it. There has to be a purpose that is linked to it. Right? So the second P that we're going to discuss is what? Purpose. Can we say purpose? purpose? Matthew 5, 18, it says, I tell you the truth, until the heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. Now, many of, you, many of us know that I've been traveling in and out to Pune for my work. All right, so there is a purpose behind my assignment which is given to me. Okay, so it's a new process which is being, uh, you know, launched there and we have to migrate few things from Bangalore to Pune. Now, if I go to Pune and chill out in my hotel room and do nothing, is that purpose achieved? No. So I have this privilege of going to another city and working out there, working in that facility for a reason, for a purpose. And I am supposed to achieve that purpose. And that is at least expected out of me. You know, so every one of us here, we have a purpose. We have a purpose. It could be sharing Jesus. It could be uh, sharing the gospel to anyone that you know. It could be connecting to those, those individuals who require Jesus. You know, there are a lot of, lot of souls which, you know, which are in need of something and that need is nothing but Jesus. You know, as I was growing up in my, uh, early, you know, in, my, in my early college days, there were a lot of questions, there were a lot of things which was there in my mind. But I didn't have anyone to actually reach out and, you know, with whom I can actually talk, with whom I can actually share things and understand things. You know, I, I still see there are many people out there who need that kind of, you know, information, that kind of knowledge about who Lord is. You know, we can take that as our purpose. We can take that as purpose of reaching out to people, sharing Jesus, as simple as sharing Jesus. You know, it says in Proverbs, 19, Lord, you can make plans, but Lord, purpose will prevail. I have the privilege, but I have my own plans. I have got this access, but I'm going to do it in my way. Is that going to work? No. God, you know, if, if God is making a plan, there is a definite purpose behind it. You know, I've told this earlier as well. God's plan is the best plan. Amen? No matter whatever we plan, whatever we do, it's not going to yield us the right thing if we don't work towards the purpose of God himself. Jeremiah 32, 39 says, And I will give them one heart and one purpose to worship me forever for their own good, and for their own good of all their descendants. You know, let's, let's, read it, let's read this again. And I will give them one heart and one purpose to worship me forever for their own good and for the good of all their descendants. You know, the span or the, or the time span that we spend in this earth is, is very limited. You know, it could be hardly a few years and then we are gone. But this time span, what we have been allotted, has a purpose behind it. 
You know, we were discussing this again in house church. You know, some things that you saw in this generation, you might not reap in this generation, but the generations to come would actually have the fruit of it. Amen? So, the purpose to worship me forever for their own good and for their good of their descendants. So, what me, what, what, whatever we might do right now as a purpose would yield some fruit, possibly in this generation or maybe the generations to come. Amen? Do you believe that? Now, let's go to the third P. So, what is the first P? Privilege. Second P? Purpose. Let's go to the third P, which is produce. Now, we have been given this privilege. We have given this purpose also. But what if we don't produce it? Okay, let's go back to my own example. I go to Pune. I have been told to develop n number of contents, n number of modules. I don't do that. Then what's the whole point of me traveling to Pune? No use. You know, I have the privilege of getting into the hotel room, work here. I mean, everything is being taken care of. My cabs come and they'll pick me up, they'll drop me, they'll drop me back. Every other privilege I have. I've been also given an agenda to complete a project. But if, what if I don't actually produce it? It's not going to give you an end result. Isaiah 55, 11 says, It is same with my word. I send it out and it will always produce fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Now, this is, this is Prophet Isaiah talking about it would produce, okay, it would produce. It will always produce fruit. It will accomplish all I wanted and it will always prosper everywhere I send. But there is a certain amount of effort. There is a certain amount of, you know, activities that we have to do in order to produce it. You know, if we sit over it for a long period, it's definitely not going to give you a result. It might just give you some skeleton of it, but that's not what a father is looking for. Father is looking out of, or, or out of that tree a fruit to come out. And if you behave, that, like, behave like that fig tree who's been there for many years, you know, if you, if you read that uh, verse back again, it says the owner came back to that tree, that tree after three years. Now, I was reading, I was researching about fig trees. It says it takes at least three years for a tree to bear fruit. So in that consideration, this would be probably the sixth year. The owner would have given definitely three years initially just to see whether there is a fruit or not. He would have added more three years, just a, you know, ex ex extra amount of time to see whether it can do it or not. So I assume that's probably the sixth year that is coming and checking whether the fruit is there or not. So already there is a lot of time which is given. Already there's a lot of time that is already given by the God, by the Father himself. But still there is no result. But who is interceding for us there? Jesus. Jesus is interceding and saying, Father, give me one more year. Give me one more year and this tree would yield a fruit. This tree would definitely bear a fruit by next year. But to produce that fruit, let's, let's go, uh, you know, gardening. To produce that fruit, what all you need? What all you need probably, probably. I mean, if, if at all you have to work it out. Any, any gardeners here? I mean, anyone who do gardening here? You need probably the right kind of soil if it's not there, yeah? You need the right kind of fertilizers. You need 
pesticides, okay. You need pesticides also. So that's not organic, right? Okay. Uh, still, you need pesticides. You need right amount of water. You know, it should not be very less. It should not be too much of it. If, if everything put into consideration, it's done for the next one year, that's when you're going to yield the fruit. Do you agree to that? Do you agree to that? So let's assume that we all have one year from now. You know, one year is, is a very long time to actually uh, yield that fruit within us. And how do you get to this fruit is something which is very simple. This concept can be applied to any part of the, uh, you know, any part of uh, our, our daily life. And that's nothing but consistency. You know, consistency in everything that we do. Consistency in, in, in our prayer life. Consistency in our walk with God, you know, consistency in, in, in the urge of learning more and more and, 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 and getting closer as much as possible. You know, that is the key which would yield the fruit, which would produce that fruit. You know, so for the first two P's that we discussed, what are those? Privilege, purpose. This is already assigned to you. You know, this file of this assignment is already given to you. You know this. But your major part of the work is under produce or protection. And that's where your real effort comes into the picture. And how do we do that? As I said, it's more or less nothing but the consistency that we have to show. You know, it's very easy for me to stand here and preach on consistency, but, you know, it's... It's our individual walk, it's, it's our individual connection with God, you know, that keeps us consistent or that, that leads to the next level, which is nothing but yielding the fruit. Ezekiel 36, 8 says, But the mountains of Israel will produce heavy crops of fruit for my people, for they will be coming home again soon. As I said, we don't have a lot of time. We don't have really a lot of time. Uh, I'm not sure like, like, like whether we all would be in heaven someday. You know, I believe we all should be there. But we don't have really that time to actually wait and, and, and sit and think and, and, and think upon what all we have and then we work on it. No. I believe we should start working right now in order to produce that fruit which God is expecting out of us. Uh, Matthew 7, 17 to 19, it says, good tree produces good fruit and bad tree produces bad fruit. So now we have to take a call. Now we have to decide which one we are supposed to be, whether good or bad. A good tree can, can't produce bad fruit. Very clear. Are we getting that? If we are a good tree, would, would you produce a bad fruit? No ways. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. So do you guys want to miss the bus? I definitely don't want to miss the bus. So it's, 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 what, it's, what, what, it's, it's what the decision that we have to make, you know? The, the, the true wine that, that we have as an access is nothing but Jesus. You know, if you hold on to Jesus, if you hold on to Jesus in the right way that we are supposed to, I'm pretty sure that we're going to definitely yield our fruit. Let's go to the next slide, which is out of John 15, 4 to 8. Yes, I am the wine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. I'm sure by now you are clear. What is the key to produce? Jesus himself. 
So forget about your, uh, the first P. What is the first P? Privilege. Second P? Purpose. This is done and dusted. This is already there with you. But to produce, this is what we need. And that's Jesus himself. Let's, let's read it again. Yes, I am the wine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. You know, as I said, it's, if you carry that tag on yourself that you can do everything, probably there is no, nothing is going to happen. You might clear those two P's initially, but you would stuck in the last P. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. I mean, that's like crazy, right? But if you remain in me and in my word remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it would be granted. That's what the, the, the end result of the produce or the production actually comes out. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples and this brings great glory to my father. So who had a problem at the start? Father, right? I mean, not problem, but father had certain apprehension saying that this guy, this person is not producing that fruit. But Jesus is actually giving us a solution how to impress our father. Can we read that again? Can we read that again, everyone? When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciple. This brings great glory to my father. Amen. Amen. We started with this, right? Wherein father is unhappy and he's asking, you know, Jesus to cut down this tree because this is not yielding the fruit. Now, we are at this point where Jesus is not just interceding for us, not just pleading for us to his father, but is also giving us that solution. Saying that this is what you are supposed to do. If you do this, my father is going to be happy. And he won't have any more complaints or he won't even ask me to cut you down. Amen? Are we, are we, are we getting anything? Are we learning something? So what is it? Learn. Privilege. Second P, purpose. Privilege and purpose is already been given to you. Is that correct? It's already assigned in your name. But where is the majority of the work that we have to do? Is to produce. And we also have the solution or the way how do we produce. Amen? Amen. Are we learning something? Yes? yes? So let's repeat again. Privilege. Purpose, produce. Where is the one, which is the one that we have to uh, focus a lot? Produce. Amen? Amen. 